you're an outsider and you don't belong in here. There's something big happening. Luckily, I get to be a part of it. He's kind of the first inspiration I had. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Summers Bison. Welcome back to our bison channel. Me and Meyer are gonna do a little pasture rotation today. Betty! Maya and I are gonna do a little pasture rotation this morning. We're gonna put out some minerals, cubes to Big Joe. Betty, 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 Betty. Also wanna to talk to you about some reactions from the five yearling heifers that Marissa and I brought over and how the South Dakota and our Wolverine yearling heifers responded to them and Haas too as well. We'll let you know about it. And then we're gonna make a visit somewhere uh, to where it all started for me. Um, I have to show that to you guys. Good morning. Y'all see my truck that come running. This is the herd we're gonna rotate today out in this luscious green pasture. That's some recovery time. I'd say they're ready for a rotation. What do you guys think? What's up, Hoss? Mr. Attitude. Okay, okay, okay. Jackie, joined us? Hi, Jackie. Okay, Jackie. Look who else is coming. Over the hill. Stick on you, girl. Big chill. One big. Here's the other one. All right. So, what I honestly need to do is I should pull through here first, since they went ahead and came up here, and then rotate them in this pasture here. This pasture has had rest for about three weeks and. As much moisture as we've had, we've had a lot of growth. Because of the warm temperatures, it's helped uh, a lot with the moisture to get a lot of this grass to grow. So I'm gonna rotate them back into pasture one for now. This is that group of 27 that is now 27, was 22. Marissa and I brought five females over the other day to join this knucklehead right here. So yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, managed to get in here safely. It's always a challenge when they all meet at one spot. So we're, uh, I'm gonna get them away from this gate, this front area of pasture three, four. It's just much easier. So I'm gonna take them down here a little bit. I like to use this road to pour cubes out. So get them distracted and then we'll rotate the Haas group.
All right, Big Joe Herd is taken care of now. We'll just pull back in here, in pasture one. Let him out in pasture one. It's much easier. Some newbies didn't make it. Let's flip this gate around since they don't know. They're all busy grazing with these two. That's stuck back here. These are the t two of the five that we brought over. And they just don't know how to, where the open gate is because they haven't been in this pasture but for a couple of days. Maya's loving it. What do you think? Yeah. Let's see if we can get around them. It doesn't look like they're gonna. Let's see if they'll let us get on this side. Nope. All right, forget it. We're just gonna leave the pasture open. They'll make their way over there. And then uh, to the rest of them, in pasture one, they'll make their way over there. They'll figure it out. You just have to tie this gate back so Haas doesn't mess with it. And we'll uh, set the gate on them later. They'll come through after I pull out of the pasture. So we'll bring it back and we'll latch it right here. Find my wire. Don't have to be fancy. A little barbed wire. All right, so that's pinned back. So pasture two, pasture one, they'll figure it out. Come on, Maya, let's go up here. Come on, good girl. all them heads down <laughs> they're busy the other day whenever marissa and i yeah we had fun letting them out my brother showed up cole uh meager um a good buddy from texas showed up because he's here to film something exciting I'm going to bring to you guys. So that's something coming up in this uh, video I want to show you. But before I do that, before I show you what else is going on, the other day when we let them out, uh, when you when you fly the drone and stuff, sometimes you just, you're flying the drone to, to get good image and, and just what they're doing. Well, I went back. I had the time to uh, go back and look at it because Cole was flying it for me while I was letting them out and stuff. Well, when we let them out and got the footage, we went back home and we're watching it and breaking, breaking down film like we always do. And whenever we went back and watched it, it was pretty incredible how the Haas herd responded to those five females that came over. And uh, let's just say it was not a warm welcoming the uh, Ponderosa property at all, really. It was, uh, it was like, hey, uh, who are you? And get the heck out of my pasture kind of a uh, greetings. And that's just because these 22 uh, in this Haas group uh, have been together for a long time. Uh, basically as, as calves. If you guys are new to us, we uh, purchased some South Dakota heifers back in December of 21. We purchased 11. Um, I lost one over the summer due to a nitrate poisoning and that hoss came in that group as well. So I had one bull and 10 females from South Dakota. And then I also was able to purchase through a, a partnership with Gerald Parsons, my vet, 10 female calves from Canada. 
and uh, those are from the Wolverine Bison up there in Canada. We had 22 and then, then I brought two over that we had raised up and I wanted to see how they would do with uh, this herd. They did really well and kind of made their way into the system. So this 22 has been together for a while and then we brought the five over and they just was not a warm welcoming. Here's these two uh, strays here that haven't quite figured out where the gate is. They want over here with their buddies, but haven't figured it out yet. When we brought them over, uh, it was, it was just like, you know, you're an outsider. And so uh, I think that happens a lot in, in these, these, these herds, because these animals are so, so social. And, uh, you know, it's like, you're not in this club. You're, you're, uh, you don't belong in here. And you know, they're going to go through this gate. Okay. So that's just me being patient basically now they came through and uh, so that's good now i can uh, shut uh, pasture two off finally but it, it's just going to take a little bit of time for the new five females to kind of make their way into this herd it's part of the pecking order part of the hierarchy system guys take a look take a look at this footage here i thought it was great um you can see them pushing them around you can see them and this happened i've seen this before but it they just would run them and run them and run them and and they were kind of push them off to the side and uh this behavior i'm not exactly sure of why it is this behavior and why they do that it's not a warm welcoming but that's just how they treat uh new members and 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 these five that i brought over only a couple of them really compared in size to the 22 that i already have over here um, some of them are just a little smaller and that's because they were born later in the summer. So they just will push them and then they'll run them and run them and run them. They'll go up and poke them and headbutt them and stuff like that. Behavior that I don't know why, but that's just part of it. Part of this pecking order and the social uh, system that these animals have. And when you have some that have been together for a long time and then some outsiders come in, you know, they just may not know how to take it. And their first response is, hey, get out of here, shoo, shoo, shoo. And that's the response that we saw flying the drone after he let these five females out. So just to make some of you feel better, you know, I know Eleanor is kind of on the bottom of that pecking order and I understand uh, lots of people get frustrated with that. And that's just, that is life. That happens in cattle, that happens in horses all the time. And uh, especially in these animals. And uh, Eleanor is great, she's doing good. And you know, you leave them in a pasture, there's plenty of room for them to get away and escape and do their own thing and still live with their herd because at the end of the day, Eleanor still wants to be with that herd. And when you move her away from the others, she she can't stand it. It, it. it stresses her out. So that's when we put her back with the herd and where she feels comfortable. That's where she belongs. With that being said, uh, me and Marissa and Cole are going to um, another place. I'm excited to show you some history and where it all started for me. So you guys follow us along. So one of the questions that I always get is, how did you start raising bison or what got you into raising bison? Well, it all starts right here in this building. There's a big 
big long story to this guy right here. This is the famous Crooked Horn. It all started with this guy back whenever I graduated high school. I was lucky to get a summer internship starting here at the National Park Service at the Chickasaw National Recreation Area in my hometown, Sulphur. Got a job and I was a biological technician. Number one thing to do was take care of the bison. I'd never really had any hands-on experience with bison, but that all changed whenever pulled out into the bison pasture for the first time. This guy here came up to us and I was just blown away. He really was the thing that really kind of inspired me. Just his sheer size and his uniqueness about him. The majestic part about him just pulling out there in the pasture and he had just come up to us to that truck that we were in and I was blown away at it. And so he's kind of the first inspiration I had and being out there with those animals up close and personal, him coming up to the glass door and to the window and, and wanting some cubes. Um, so this is where it all started with me and my love and passion for these animals back in the summer of 2004. Luckily, here we are here at the visitor center at the Chickasaw National Recreation Area in Sulphur. And uh, this is where he is now. And so how did he get here? Um, Crooked Horn had passed away, I think, 2008 or 9 and luckily when he died he died during the winter and so my boss was able to uh, recover him and his hide and his skull and horns obviously and turn him into a full body mount definitely something different and unique having the drop down horn and you don't see that very often so he, he was already had some personality with the unique horn um, but as big as he was in this national park, everybody knew who he was. And so it's nice to have him here in the visitor center and uh, we can come visit him. So why am I showing this to you? Why am I here at the uh, Travertine Nature Center in our park? Well, there's something big happening. Remember those bison I used to take care of and the story I just told you? Well, that herd has a new pasture. They've been in a pasture for a long time. Now they're moving to a new one. And luckily, I get to be a part of it. So let me show you here what's going on. So here's the old pasture. This is part of the, this is our park map. It's a 10,000 acre national park here in Sulphur. And you can see the Arbuckle Lake, but this part of the town, which is where sulfur really gets its names from, is the natural minerals in the water here. As you can hear the water behind me, there's lots of natural springs here. But I want to show you this map real quick, cousin, so we can see where the bison are actually going to be moved. Right here is called the bison pasture. You can actually hike around on this trail. It's called the bison trail. And now they're going to be moved right across the road. And this is not just a road. This is a federal highway. It's Highway 177 that splits through the pastures, actually. So it's not going to be uh, something easy. These animals are going to be loaded up in a trailer and they're going to move, be moved from one pasture across the highway into a new pasture. Uh, this thing has been taking five years for development and it's all going to happen tomorrow. And I'm lucky to be a part of it. So I get to bring it to you. You know what? Someday you guys can come see this herd here at the National Park. <laughs> All right, so 